Okay, here we go. <laughs> From igloos in the Arctic to skyscrapers in our mega cities, humans have always created homes to shelter in. The population keeps on growing, so you can't waste any more time. 60% worldwide of the waste comes from construction sites. We are now 8 billion souls on our planet, and the demand for a roof over our heads is more pressing than ever. When I'm 90 years old, what kind of world will I be living in future generations? But how do we accomplish that in a sustainable way? Good architecture should be one that is affecting the environment. Our generation has like a responsibility to change it. So beautiful. I always think about how to harmonize the people with the nature. Incredible. We believe that we can fix the housing crisis. And then water. Yes. I don't get how that could not be part for everybody. Exactly. That's it. I'm a father to two beautiful daughters. I'm also a husband, a son, a friend, an avid table tennis player, an actor. Jamie Lannister on the room bike. I'm a human being. As a species, whatever we imagined, we created. We believed the resources of nature were endless. We were wrong. This show is about solutions and the people behind them. My name is Nikolai Costa Waldau, and this is an optimist's guide to the planet. Vietnam, beautiful country of 100 million people. Threatened by climate change, Vietnam suffers from extreme storms, flooding, and crippling heat waves. The reason I've come to Ho Chi Minh City is to meet local architect Vo Trong. See the damn sleeves. Yep, that's right. He has solutions to how we can live better in big cities and what he believes we need to include when building for the future. What's going on here? What's, what's this whole thing? Uh, next month, yeah. they celebrate for the Liberation Day in the Saigon. Yeah. We prefer to say Saigon than Ho Chi Minh City, you know the reason? No. Because the Ho Chi Minh City is a new name after 1975. I can't wait yeah. to start exploring. Yeah. Here, more than 40 million motorbikes. Now it's not rush hour, however, tomorrow. Don't scare me. Yeah. Okay. They never stop. <laughs> to get around Ho Chi Minh City, I found the perfect form of transportation. Just imagine if all the bikes here were electric. What effect that could have on the air quality? No need for face masks. What's the range on this one? This is 200 kilometers. Oh, wow. 200 kilometers of, on one charge, and it takes from the regular, like, a socket, three hours to charge it. Is that it? That's it. That's incredible. Do you have big helmets? We have helmets. Because I have a massive head. You know I have a bigger head than oh. I have, yeah. Do you want to bet? All right. <laughs> For a beer. It's OK on me, but uh, it's not comfortable. I'm going to get a free beer now. Yeah, I think so. Engine, too small, eh? It looks small. <laughs> this is where I go, this is madness, right? Like with an electric car, to me it just feels easier and safer to ride electric bikes. But when he said that traffic never stops, he was serious. You just have to count on them slowing down for you to get across. This is where I just go and I hope that they're gonna stop. Okay, here we go. <laughs> 
And they did. Oh, okay, that, that was a little scary. Oh my god. It's definitely gonna take a minute to get used to this traffic. Here we go. over here I, I had to look for a man in black with a nice smile nice to meet nice you. To meet you nice to meet you sit up please oh fantastic okay these are oh, Vietnamese I'm... coffee and Vietnamese chairs <laughs> yes well be careful okay no I know I know. can support you uh, yeah no I, it's uh, it's it's perfect so are you from Ho Chi Minh are you... I was uh... born in the small village with our electric city but a lot of greenery around. Mm -hmm. I had been uh, studying in Japan with a lot of high-rise buildings. Mm -hmm. And I feel like human beings, we have very big problem with dealing with the, our Earth, our planet, yes. our environment. Yes. Yes. So that's why in my architecture, I always think about how to harmonize the people with the nature. I believe with the huge mega city like Bangkok or Ho Chi Minh or Jakarta, the human will have a lot of mental health problems. That's why I, I started to meditate. Oh, you meditate? Yes, because I also have kind of unhappiness in, 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 in my heart for a long time. Until 2012, I started to meditate and I felt like it changing little by little, day by day. Luckily, it helped for my uh, creati uh, creativity. For you, the meditation actively helps your work? It helped a lot, not a little bit. It improved the concentration, like a highway without traffic, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, which would be great here in Ho Chi Minh City, just oh, a yeah. <laughs> highway without traffic. <laughs> I'm heading to one of Vo Trump's earliest projects. It's just outside of Ho Chi Minh City, and it incorporates many of his ideas. Oh, I'm not sure which way to go. Wow. There's fish everywhere. This is very nice. <laughs> like it? Yeah. It's incredible. Uh, I did it when I was just uh, 29. So this was the first building you built after you came from Japan? Yes. What was the idea behind this? My image is how to make the building without air conditioning. OK. So it's one roof, one big roof. So yes, one, one big roof. We built this 7,000 pieces of bamboo, and it catch the flow of the air in, and then we make the water artificial yeah, yeah. water surface for catching the cool air around. Yeah, yeah. And it works, right? Yes, yes. And under the bamboo forest. So beautiful, the trees, huh? It just makes the building is very calm atmosphere. And better yet, bamboo, also known as the green steel, is a renewable resource that captures CO2. Solutions are about sometimes just thinking outside the box and also just using common sense, you know. Does it make us feel good to look up and, and see, you know, trees or plants? Yes, it does. Why don't we just do that then? Why don't we introduce that into the cities more? Votrunk's buildings all have a sense of what I would describe as organic calm, always including plants and greenery. What is this project? Uh, the meditation hall in uh, Myanmar. Oh, really? Yes. You can see a big roof, like a big tree, big shadow, and then people can sit under that to meditate. Uh, the... Meditation is at the very core of Votrung's life. 
and he's even introduced it at his studio. His whole team meditates at least an hour every day. As much as meditation seems like the perfect antidote to the hustle and bustle of the city, I kind of want to explore. And I have the perfect companions. John Tran, my Vietnamese-Canadian cinematographer, and his old friends take me on a little tour. I'm so happy that we have this off day, and uh, you know the camera's on, on my shoulder right now. <laughs> This is your first photo, then? My first photo. And you know, to have it in Vietnam is the, like uh, you, you waited for the right place. Yeah. Oh, that's this is so good. Uh, look at this. <laughs> so, what time is it now? It's so oh, good time. It's all good. Oh, you're going to uh, ping pong? Yeah, okay, okay, play the ping pong. Yeah. Everywhere we go, I find someone to play ping pong because it's such a great way to meet people, right? A bit of exercise is always good. <laughs> Even when you're playing in 40 degrees Celsius. Yes, that's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot hotter than my game. Oh, there's a lot of character in this club. Oh, oh God, he's too good. Honestly, do you think I will be able to win any points? Mm, maybe. <laughs> I'm so happy that he, he gets to experience uh, Nikolai gets to experience this. Yeah. Oh, it was I... just luck. It was just luck, fam. The ping pong in Ho Chi Minh. This is great. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I love table tennis. Well, any sport, really. <laughs> to meet new people, to connect, to share a laugh. That's at the core of a good life. The mango here, um, special because uh, the taste is not sour. No? Yeah, it's not sour, it's sweet. It's so close. So that is, that's hard, right? Yes, right. I might regret this, but... Right. Oh, that was good food. Yes, of course you can have a picture. All right. Now let's go. It's early morning, and here in Vietnam, it's already hot. And if we continue on our current path, it'll only get hotter in the future. And that means we'll need more energy to cool us down. It's a vicious cycle. Because if we don't transition away from using fossil fuels for our energy needs, we'll actually speed up global warming instead of slowing it down. I'm on my way to what Votron calls the urban farm. So beautiful. It used to be his company office. Instead of air conditioning units, he uses something else. Plants combined with clever design. Good morning, Ro. Good morning. How are you? Uh, good. <laughs> so this is the building. It look nice, huh? Before you came, that thing when you stand close to it, right? Like when you're when you're underneath it, you're standing here, you look up, right? It's 
it, you don't even see the building. It's like a forest. It's a forest, and then you come out and go, oh. And literally a breath of fresh air as the plants both cool the building and filter the air. You can see from here a separate system from the structure. Yeah. It just hang out outside. And, you know, it make the, the, the space in the middle of the building. And that's why is, the building is, uh, is cooling. No, 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 it's amazing. And we have the irrigation system. Can we go inside? Yes, please. All right. It's got a very nice, calm atmosphere. Yes. Maybe we had been meditating here for a long time. I guess. So it made... It gave it good, the good yeah, vibrations. Good vibration. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But also the greenery is so nice. Yes. That wherever you go... Yes, yes, yes. And it cover everywhere. But you still can see outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, this is nice. Oh, they have Oh, they have the table tennis. Yeah. All right. Good. Yes. This is also good for vertigo. Uh, it's a little bit dangerous, huh? And I see the birds there. What a nice open space up here. So yeah. calm. Yeah. The spaces we live in, they do affect us. Yes. Emotionally and a mentally. Lot. And obviously, going to work when you're in, in such a green environment, or if you live at home and you're surrounded by green, it affects you in a positive way, yes, opposed yes. to being, looking out the window, the only thing you see is another building. And I hope one day all the streets, all the city with many green buildings appear, and people will be very happy yeah. with that. Yeah, you want the future to be that this is normal, and that would be, oh, that's a strange... Yeah naked building, you know, you know? Yes, yes, I think so. Let's hope so. The need for new buildings all over the world is immense. But Votrung shows that it is possible to build in a much more sustainable way by including the natural world in our cities. connected to nature is incredibly important to all of us. Not least our children. But how do we raise them in a big city without losing that connection? What is this place? A uh, kindergarten for the true factory children. Oh, so it's a, okay, so it's a kindergarten that is built for the, the factory workers. Yes. That's, that's great. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to build it very low cost. Votrum was commissioned to build a kindergarten. I'm curious to see how his vision is passed on to the next generation. Like you can see, it's totally different from the, the road, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. here is like the courtyard with many levels of the greenery. And is it, okay, so it goes, oh. Yes, and the playground is connected to the rooftop. Oh, so they can go everywhere, the kids? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, amazing. They, their playground is like kind of infinity. Well, the kids look very happy. So you must be a good teacher. Mỗi ngày đến với các bé là một niềm vui mà các bé cũng rất là thích đi học ở đây. Every day come here is like very happy and then the kids also very like to come here. So the kids are going to come plant? Yeah, they can put in the seed themselves, and then later the plant grow up. <laughs> I should do together with them. Uh, can I? Yeah. OK. I'm going to give you some. There you go. And uh, you're going to plant it. You ready? That's amazing. Now you put you put the seed first before you water it. Wait, and then look, 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 look. You do this. You cover. See? And then water. All the way. And then, and then over here. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Give me five. 
That's it. That's it. perfect. Okay, let's go. Let's go here. Oh yes, I can stay here all day. <laughs> This is great. Không bên kia họ đang hái rau rồi. You can speak uh, Vietnamese. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm not. Nhưng bây giờ đang ở Canada. Canada, huh? Vietnamese. Uh, so is the first time you plant vegetable or? No, 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 no. <laughs> first time here. Uh, first time here. Okay. What are they? Khoan khoan hái con. Okay. Wow. Rồi cắt đi con. What do you call this? Uh, cà tím. Cà tím. Mm. Eggplant. So what are these called? Khoai lang in Vietnamese. Sweet potatoes. Well, that's amazing. Sweet, sweet potato. potato. Uh, so sweet potato. That's my yeah, favorite. Yeah. In Vietnam, we also take the leaf to... Oh, really? Not only uh, we eat the... That's very sustainable. Use everything. Yeah. So how do we make the future more sustainable in, in on all these levels? And, and where does our architecture fit into that? We should make each architect like a ecological system. So basically what you're saying is that all the things are actually here. We just have to implement it. Yes. Uh, My many elements are for free, like sunlight, yeah. like rainwater, like wind. We, we need to use that in an yeah. effective way. Uh, it's so inspiring. I would, if this is the place I would want my kids to go to kindergarten. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, like, moving forward? Are you optimistic? Yes, optimistic, but distracted element like social media, internet, TV, human more and more anxiety, unhappy, and yeah. mental health will be the problem. So you need concentration. Yes. You need to be mindfulness. Yeah. And then that's why you need to meditate to release those stuff from our mind, our heart. He was giving me a whole meditation tour when we were walking around. It was very nice. Have you ever meditated, John? Wait. Give me a camera. Why, uh, why I haven't? Have, well, you, have you ever meditated? No, I haven't. No? No, I haven't. So how, what's it like to be back in Vietnam? I mean, I know you've been back. You, you left when you were how old? I, I left when I was eight years old because uh, I was uh, ethnic Chinese and there was some civil unrest. So uh, my, uh, my dad uh, decided that he was going to take the whole family and escape. And then so we were one of the 10,000 Vietnamese refugees. Our family were the, the lucky few that uh, you know, were sponsored. John's family made it to Canada and found what every person on this planet deserves, a safe shelter, a home. For me, John's story is an example of the most precious resource we have. It connects us, it's fundamental to us accomplishing our goals for a better world, and it's one that we all carry, hope. While Votrung uses bamboo and plants in his buildings, Most construction relies on much more damaging materials and methods. The construction sector is responsible for almost 40% of global CO2 emissions and an estimated third of the world's waste. We can't keep digging and sucking material out of the earth forever. A startup here in Berlin has come up with a simple idea with huge potential. It's a, it's a beautiful, sunny spring day. We're going to what used to be a, a factory to meet a group of people, a company that have specialized in, in basically recycling and to um, use as much from old buildings as you can. and go and have a look at the pigeons. Give me some seeds. Oh, Jesus, that's a lot of pigeon shit. 
Ja, das ist ein Gegenschneider. Uh, Hi. You Rebecca? Yes, I'm Rebecca. Oh, I'm Nikolai. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. And uh, and who's who's this standing this over here? This is Finn and Sophia. Hello, Finn. Hello, Sophia. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, what yeah. are you guys doing here? We are um, here doing a circularity assessment. That means that we look which materials here in the house can be still reused for other projects. That uh, seems like common sense. Yes, it seems like common sense, you would think, but it's actually not done a lot um, worldwide. Like from construction side, it's still a pretty um, new concept. It's just pretty recent that we started to always produce everything new. So I mean, like before 100 years, like every old church was built out of an even older church. Yeah. They, like just our wealth nowadays made it possible that we always produce everything new. Actually, 60% worldwide of the waste comes from construction side. Oh, wow. Very few people know that. Actually, I, as an architect, didn't know that a few years ago. And I mean, I was working before for a very like well-known, very design-driven architecture office. And mm -hmm. um, as many of us uh, working for Concolab, and we realized a few years ago how bad it is actually what we do, and that we are part of the like climate killer number one, like mm -hmm. construction industry. Um, yeah, we wanted to change uh, what we actually like the process how buildings are done nowadays. So it's it's so Congola is both. Reused, but yeah. it's also recycling, I'm guessing. We have always the focus on reuse, and it's really just if there's no other option, then we consider the recycling. Uh -huh. But it's okay. really like, let's try to reuse, reuse. as much as possible, yeah. How old is this building? It's, I think, 1930s. I don't need to look it up exactly wow. again, but yeah, it's pretty old. And so what exactly is going on here? This, for example, is an air heating system, uh -huh. and it is just 15 years old. Uh -huh. And while a lot of stuff here in the house is way older, and this can be totally reused. So basically, this whole unit, yeah. you're going to take that down? Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be sold and, and be put into a new exactly. construction? I mean, it's not just this, because here you see also there's like this whole system of heating units. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How much fun is it to drive this thing? <laughs> it's not much fun? It's so much fun. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> So you're going to show me something else? Yeah. All these rooms, the offices, I guess. Yeah, they were offices. But actually, these windows are amazing. And yeah. these radiators are totally can be reused. And they are like all these little details, like doors, like floor systems. You said um, you're an architect. Yes. Yeah. So, so you don't get to, to draw many buildings here. I love design um, and I will always, and I mean, the great thing is now I have to do, I work with a lot of offices together that make uh -huh. great designs, but I help them to do them with reuse materials. Yeah. So like the form follows the availability, which yeah. materials are right now actually in reuse shape on the market. Yeah, I mean, as long as no one else do, does it yet, we have to do it. And, and why yeah. is that important? Right now, this is always the numbers that really make me, uh, I can't dizzy. get really, yeah, maybe dizzy. The fact is that actually more material right now is already built into houses than it is still in the earth. Really? So we have already used most of what is here in the world. I mean, now all the sand beaches in Africa mostly also get destroyed because you need all the sand for concrete. I don't get how that could not be important for everybody <laughs> because like, I, would, I don't want our world to get even worse. Like, I want it to get better. My mother had a favorite phrase that I try to implement in my life. Common sense. Let's try common sense. Like Votrum designing his buildings using plants, water, and the flow of air to cool them. Like the idea that we reuse building materials instead of dropping them in a landfill. But new isn't necessarily better. It's all common sense. Looking forward to show you tomorrow our office, yeah. and also because of the space, but also because then you can get a better picture even of the whole circle of um, circularity. Very cool. Oh, they got coffee. I should stop here. Hello? Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. And what do you do here? I'm the space experience manager here. Space ex Oh, this yeah. is the space experience? Yes. How long have you been here? I mean, this is just open. I'm yeah, so, just so thinking just because of construction outside. The thing is like to combine uh, the construction works outside, which can be loud and noisy for the people who work here, uh, to combine it with actually a working atmosphere. That's a fantastic way of making, like, I know you think it's really yeah. noisy and annoying, 
but it's all part of the space experience. Oh, you should be a real estate agent. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Oh, it's very nice to meet you guys. Now I have to find Rebecca. She's in one of the, the Rebecca's one of the cubicles. Oh, no, it's broken. We need a new one. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, that's a nice little door. That's good. Oh, there she is. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, nice to see you again. Nice to see you. See, you have a coffee machine here. Hi, Dominic. This is Dominic. Dominic, nice to meet you. Sorry. Yeah, and this is Sean. Hi, nice okay. to meet you. And what do you do here? Lifecycle passports. Yeah. That's what we're going to That's talk. what we're talking yeah. about. And Dominic? Uh, I am one of the founders of Computer. I'm going to yeah. talk to you a little later, maybe. Yes. So, I noticed a very uh, nice uh, uh, radiator. Yes. Was, yeah. uh, the heater that you also saw yesterday as it was still in, built in another oh. building. Yeah. I mean, everything you will notice here is actually reused. Everything. Not everything. 80%. 80%. Yeah. I, I met a gentleman when I got my coffee who was head of the space. Ah, Felix. Yeah. Felix, Probably, exactly. as the space manager. You were explaining why it's so wonderful for the people working here yeah. to hear the constant noise outside because it's just part of the space experience. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were a few moments in the winter when they were changing the windows yeah. in the winter. A little cold. They handed out like blankets. Oh, that's um, nice. That was nice. That was also part like, of the space experience. Yeah, yeah. For the freezing for the space experience, yeah. Um, passport. Yeah, passport. You want to grab a chair? I, I would love to grab a chair. So you see, first, I wanted to show, show you quickly. This is what we did. I'll see you later, Dominic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Can we later find him again? Um, so this is the CA that we did yesterday. Um, uh -huh. So like, you will probably recognize these windows. That I we, do recognize yeah, them. Yeah, do you recognize them? Like, here are all the projects that we have done, like, in the last half year. And like, here you can buy the facade, and you can buy the railings of the staircase and lamps. How competitive are you guys? What is the equivalent price yeah. that you can sell it? It's like 60% of the price that would be news around. So it is cheaper. It is cheaper, yeah. yeah. Normally, yeah. Yeah, so like this is the back end then of the CA that we did yesterday. Yeah. That in future, we don't have to do all of that anymore, but that we actually already know what is built into a building. Yeah. And that everything is documented. We have like a passport where we actually have every material that was used in this building. Can I see documented. that? Yes. This is a standard BIM model, so building information model, mm -hmm. where all the information for a plan is actually saved in. And based on that, we can create a lifecycle passport which documents all materials that are actually in the building, documents it pretty exactly on our platform, and you can get like scorings scored by reuse potential, deconstructability, recyclability, and separability. What makes a building difficult to recycle and what makes it easy to recycle? It's depending on the material itself. It makes it more difficult if yeah, the material is built in, in a way that you can, can take it apart. That's why if you walk around here, you'll see, you won't see glue, you'll see screws. You'll see... Oh, here the big screws up there. Yeah, sure. That's pretty special for this way. We used to do things. Exactly. We yeah. have to make sure that the buildings that we're building today, the new buildings, or if we're refurbishing a building, it needs to be built in a way that we don't need to demolish it in the future. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, we're all here at Concular for that reason. And to be able to say that where everybody's like, oh, this is what we're doing, this is yeah. what we're trying to bring across, it's just, it's just amazing. Okay, so if you want, I can show you a bit of space. Please show me the space. Uh, see you later. Yeah. Do it. So basically, this was a former brewery. And so this is where this opportunity was like, okay, let's do something with that building. So yeah. Everything you see was on another building. For example, here, there's nothing glued. Everything is screwed yeah. or stacked. So that means, basically, you can, if you want, unscrew everything and put it somewhere else. Yeah. This is also quite interesting because this basically was at the camping place before. Okay. The pipes, right? Yeah. They are not hidden. Normally in a building, your height is in the wall, pipe. but now it's easy. But because you cannot get them out anymore, so you just have it here. And it looks actually quite nice. And so you, it's easy to, uh, to change it. It's easy to deconstruct it also again. Yeah. We have these grids. These were normally put on the bottom, right? Yeah. They are like now used the yeah, banister. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Look at the windows. In Germany, you have to have double glazed windows. We just put two windows. With this, we can fulfill all the regulations. Sure. Also, uh, quite interesting material here. So maybe you recognize that this is something we use normally for construction sites, right? Yes. And now uh, this is the handle for, for going up the stairs. But if you want, I can also show you the, the rooftop. So we have sure. a very nice view. Yeah, it's open. So. This is your rooftop terrace? Yes. I mean, it's still not finished, you know. 
but it's all the construction site here. So what's the, what's the biggest challenge for this company? To really scale. We did around 250 buildings in the last three years. But every year in Germany, 20,000 buildings are getting deconstructed and around 400,000 are built. Yeah. So basically, it's just tiny what we're sure. doing. And now it's very important to put pressure on the industry that they're changing their systems. Absolutely, because I also think that, that, that we've been through this period where the focus has been on the individual. Yeah, no, it's to make, so, and, yeah. and the individual, it becomes, if you, you become completely yeah. overwhelmed. And for this thing to really take on, you need the politicians to go in and say, okay, we're going to change, exactly. change this. Politicians can talk a lot and they can say something, but sure. you have to measure them on their actions. You want it to happen quicker. Absolutely. Not, not me, no, no, but no. climate change. The question, it will come. The question is just when it comes. Will it come when we have like another flood? Uh, when uh, uh, when uh, like our um, first are, are burning? Should we wait until then? Or should we now uh, do it? Like I think our generation has like a responsibility to, to change it and to do everything and to put so much pressure on, on, on the key people to have to change now, yes. You need politicians to make some regulations that say, listen, when you build a house, you need to be able to track what you put inside it and you need, to, it, you need to be able to take it apart without turning everything into trash because it's not trash, it's uh, resources. Most inspiring is that it's, it's action, it's happening. Because there's so much talk about how do we do this and how do we, how is this even possible? You know, showing it by doing. Oh yeah. They had a ping pong table. I had to try it. Only makes sense. As we all know, there is not one solution that solves all problems. Affordable housing is required all over the planet, from Vietnam to Germany to Kenya. And we need to build a lot cheaper and faster and more sustainably. But how? I heard about this years ago, that they were trying to do, uh, you know, like small 3D printers, but make them in, in, in massive scales. You can actually make houses, and they do that here. Concrete is a, is a massive issue when it comes to CO2, but I think this has incredible potential, so I'm very excited. Dennis? Yes. How are you? I'm good. Oh, I need one of these. Yes, oh yes. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Why is it called 14 Trees? It's called 14 Trees because for every um, house that we build, we save 14 trees. Wow. Yeah. The project that we're doing right now is to get people to know what this 3D printing is about. The benefits are immense. We believe that it can fix the housing crisis. I mean, is it? Basically, like a small 3D print I can buy for my house. Yeah, it actually operates the same way. Uh -huh. So basically what they're doing right now is just uh, calibrating the printer. Okay. Yeah, balance. Just to make sure that the printer path is following what is in the drawing. important to take time to set things properly. Okay. Otherwise, you can have some shift things. And, uh, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> have a wall yeah, like this, a wall like this. It's not good. Yeah. When you talk about you know climate change, all these issues, yeah. one of the big uh, problems is construction. A lot of CO2, a lot of impact. Yes. And is this better to, to do yes. this? And in what way? We're getting about 40% savings in terms of energy. Wow. We're getting about 25% uh, savings in terms of water and about 70% uh, embodied energy savings. 70%? 70%. Oh, wow. I have two children myself, and I don't want them to, 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 to grow up in a world that is really, you know, as hot as, 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 as heck, you know? So yeah. it's, it's, it's my, my hope to be able to do things differently. What's the name of your children? Ella and Ethan. Ella and Ethan. Have, yeah. they, have they seen this? Yes. 
Are they excited? They're very excited. They just think... Uh, you think that is cool? Yeah, uh, completely. <laughs> <laughs> What's in here? Ink. Oh, it's a dry motor. I love the way yeah. you call it ink. It's easier to refer it to as an ink because... Because it's a printer. It's a printer, yeah. Can I touch? I can touch, right? Yeah. You can feel the texture. And all we do is... Just mix water. Mix with water and uh, it's pumped uh, uh, to the printer. The motor will go through the hose into the copper and it starts now printing. So now it's happening. They make it's happening now, right? Yeah, it's coming. Coming in. Oh. Okay, good check. Oh, I see. It's in the hoopla. It's coming. Right yeah, yeah. to the vault here. Yeah. Let me see if I can see it. Let me see where. It's down there. Oh, down there. Maybe I should take the camera. I'm taller than you. How do I get? Can you check? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, here we go. Oh. Oh. This is. Literally makes me feel a little sick watching this. <laughs> My stomach is about to explode. And we're traveling all over the world. This is going to happen to all of us. So when do you start moving around? When I decide it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first to do person. I am the <laughs> When I decide it. Yes. Don't give me stupid questions. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Okay. All right, perfect. This is basically how my stomach is. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, the, this is the office. It's the office, yeah. It looks like a New York loft or something. And, and you're the architect here, right? Yes. So this is, this is what you're making now, right? This is... Uh, the first phase. Which is what you're Which is what we're building. working on right now. Comprises of 10 units. Two and three bedroom houses. Yeah, two and three bedroom houses. And yes. what was the idea behind it? Well, the idea was to come up with small houses that are cheap because we have a deficiency of affordable housing, sure. especially in the country. And we need to build as many houses as possible. Yeah. And doing that requires a lot of labor, money. Uh, we have a very short period of time. The population keeps on growing, so you can't waste any more time. Growing up, I wanted to be an architect. Uh, so I took part, I saw, or I was there when my father's house was constructed. And it was fun seeing those people laying the bricks after break, after break, when the plumbers were busy yeah. putting the threads in the pipes and all that. So I saw the house being constructed from ground up, and it was interesting for me. It's an art. It was an How old were you then? I was uh, eight, nine. Uh -huh. Yeah. I have a small child, three years old. Yeah. When she grows up and when she looks at the buildings, she will know this and this and this was designed by me. And being one of the people who positively impact the environment is very important for me. Sure. Which is the one thing I've always wanted to do uh, in my career, not just building houses. I mean, anyone can build a house. You can build a house. You can design. I get to do that and help reduce the carbon footprint, thanks to this technology. Wow. Incredible. You know, time is money. These walls, we could be able to print it in three days and the whole uh, two blocks already have. So 
we had actually imported this machine from Denmark. The machine came from Denmark? It came from Denmark. Great. <laughs> I hear they do good stuff there. <laughs> yes, they do. Mm. To build a similar development and would take maybe one and a half years. We can do that within six months. From from, 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 from breaking ground to... So the key the, in the door. Exactly. Six months. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, wow. Looks like a... Cake. Yes. Uh, and this is fine also in terms of, like, water and... Uh, yes, the, we wanted to maintain the character of the 3D printing yeah, yeah. and maintain this sausage finish. There are a few areas in the, in the house that we've plastered. But the idea is, once we finish this, we'll do a, a bit of grinding to clean it up, and then a final coat of paint, and that's it. We are doing something new. Yeah. Something that has never been done in Africa, yeah. and uh, especially is sustainable. Why is that important for you? This is a world that, personally, I feel like, right now, our, our generation, is suffering from the effects of global warming. You, you, you watch those apocalyptic movies and you just think that could be us at one point if we don't take responsibility. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, I, I, I tend to think when I'm 90 years old, what kind of world would I be living in future generations? My hope is that clients would stop thinking of structures as just a place they go to sleep they should see how it's affecting the environment. I believe that good architecture should be one that is affecting the entire ecosystem, our generation, mm -hmm. and the next, and the next is going to be affected by the structures we put mm -hmm. on this planet. Mm -hmm.